Hi, I'm George, and in this Photoshop Elements How to Merge Two Photos project, I'll be showing you how to do this kind of a dreamy effect in here, where the main subject is kind of merging into the background photo. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and also click on subscribe if you haven't already done so. And to learn more about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Using Photoshop Elements to merge two photos is a fairly easy project, but there is a trick to it to get just the right look. Okay, let's just start off with a brand new file. I'm going to just close this one out of the way. We don't need that any longer. Here's the original photo I have for the girl. This is our subject photo. And then over in the photo bin, I have the background photo right there. Now I need to copy this out of this image and place it over into our new background. Let's go ahead and do our layer mask in here. Now there are two basic steps on this. The first one is just doing a standard background removal. And for that, I'll use the polygonal lasso tool. And then I'll make a new layer up here. Right click on the layer, choose duplicate layer. And we'll do all of our work on the duplicate and I'll hide that original layer. And then just make a quick selection right around this subject. Doesn't need to be in real tight, doesn't need to be exact. We'll be adjusting this with the refine edge tool. Now I'm not using anything with that table. So at this point I can just go straight down like that and straight across. And then come back up again. We'll be cutting that part off in the picture. Okay, let's just work our way around here. And then right back to the starting point, which is right there. If you look at the icon there on that pointer, and just to the bottom of that kind of a polygonal shape, when I'm right in that spot there, a little circle pops up. It's a little hard to see, but a little circle pops up right at that point when it's right at the beginning. And that just closes out your selection. Let's now do a refined edge. I'm having the feathering set at one pixel, which is fine. And then refine edge. And let's set the smart radius on. I'll leave everything else at the defaults. And I usually have mine set with the overlay, which is just easy to see. And then on this, work on your outside edge first, and then work in until you have your selection. Again, this one doesn't need to be very exact. On this one, you'll see why in just a minute or two. So we'll just work along. And again, once we're down to the table, it no longer matters. So we'll do this side over here. And just work our way down like this. If you miss a little piece, just go back and hit it again. And like right there, just do it a second time. There we go. And again, once you're down to the table, that's all you need to do. Now on this one, I'm going to be outputting this thing to a selection. Normally I'll output to a layer with a layer mask. Right now I want to have this as a selection and then choose OK. So what we get is our new layer up here, a new layer copy with our selection right here. Now here's the trick. Go up to select, come down to modify and expand. And we'll be expanding this one 25 pixels. Now the amount in here is going to depend upon the size of your image. A bigger image is going to need a larger number in here. A smaller image will need a smaller number. But this gives us about that much space. Just a nice little bit of space in there. So there's an expansion of that selection out by 25 pixels. Now that we've expanded the selection, we can go ahead and make our layer mask. Just click on the layer mask button. There's our layer mask. The background is hidden but we've retained a little bit of that background around the subject and that's what you wanted to have right in there is a little bit of background showing. Now we can bring up our other photo. There it is. I'm just going to dock this one. Working on both photos docked. Let's now go back over to the other picture. I'm just going to take the tab here and float this like that so it's a floating window. Now, if you don't have this working for you, just go up here to Edit, come down to Preferences and General right there, and make sure that both of these two tabs are checked. I'm on the General tab up here. Make sure these two are checked, Allow Floating Documents, and Enable Floating Document Window Docking. So with those two checked, choose OK. We can now do this trick. 
Now grab this layer up here and drag that layer over into the sunset picture. Okay, I can then minimize that. Now that brings over the picture and also it brings over the layer mask. Let's now position the photo. I'll pull it down until that table is hidden. I just don't want to have that in the picture. That looks pretty good. I'll put it right about there. That's kind of a nice spot. Okay, now we need to blur out this edge. And that's done on the layer mask side. So click over here. Look for the light blue outline. That means you're on that side. And then go up to Filter and come down to Blur and then Gaussian Blur. Now in here, this is it, this at zero first, so there's no blur. And as I blur this, you'll see how, if I actually pull this over, I can get the layer mask showing as well. There it is. As it blurs, it's going to be blurring both directions. You can kind of see it right there. It blurs out, but it also blurs in. So it blurs both directions. And if I set this at the actual size that we did at 25, then it blurs down right about to the edge of the image. So what you want to do is you want to blur it so it comes in and blurs into the picture a little bit. So I like to just double this number. That was the size of our expansion. Let's just double that to 50. And that blurs it in a little ways and also out a little ways. And it gives you that nice kind of a dreamy look on the edge. You can see the background just showing through right down here. And it shows through a little bit up in here. But the middle of the subject is now still solid, but around the edges, it's kind of merging into that background picture. And then choose OK. All right, that's good. Let's now put our text on here. I'll just go to the Type tool. And I'm using Bauhaus Regular. It's 93 Bauhaus, 93 Regular. It's just a nice kind of fun typeface. And the type size I'll be using here is... 55 point and just click up in here someplace there it is and then choose OK now it's overlapping because the letting down here is kind of odd I'll just triple click that looks the whole thing and come down here where it says letting move your cursor right over the name and unless I get that little hand with the finger with a couple of arrows on it, click and hold down the button on the mouse and you can then drag that back and forth and actually adjust the letting visually this way. I'm going to bring it down just until that, about there. So that dot on the eye is just about in between those two spots. Maybe just a little bit more space in here above the dot and below the O than there is between the dot and the rest of the eye right there. And she's okay. Just a nice tight spacing. Okay, now you can position your text. I'll put it right about here. So it's just kind of centered in that area right up in here. Let's now put some styling onto this thing. And for that, we'll go down to the graphics. Something I don't often show here is using the text option here under graphics. So I'll be doing you know, the graphics all the time. Just bring these up. I do these a lot and I do the shapes a lot. And of course, I do these backgrounds all the time but I don't often come into using these texts. So click on text. These are just text styles that you can apply onto some text. So let's click on the text style right there and it applies that right onto the text. Hit the green check mark and there we go. Okay, let's now do just a little bit of a tweak on this. Go back over to layers. This comes in as a layer style, kind of a fancy layer style. You see the little FX right here. Double click on that. And that brings up the Style Settings dialog box. There it is. And all I want to do is first change my lighting angle. I like having an angle of 135. Kind of upper left hand corner. And then we'll add a drop shadow to it. Now to see your drop shadow, move it all the way up here to the right so it's 100%. And then bring the distance out until it looks nice. And I think somewhere around here about 15 looks pretty good. And then we'll bring the opacity down again. Oh, about halfway, about 50%. And you can actually type this in if you want to. So you can just see a little bit through that drop shadow. And then choose OK. And there we go. There's our nice dreamy effect. We merge these two photos together. And again, the whole trick is really doing that 
selection first, then expanding the selection out so that it's just outside your subject, but nice and even around the subject. Okay, there you go. That's how to use Photoshop Elements to merge two photos together for this kind of a nice dreamy effect. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you click on share and also make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that bell icon when you subscribe so you get notifications of my new videos as they go up. And also take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, and I'll see you next time.